So today, we are using graphs to solve story problems. Specifically, we're going to use the graph of a story scenario to figure out specific information that's asking us. All right, so here's the scenario. It says, Jimmy left his house at 4 o'clock and went for a jog. After a while, he got tired, so he stopped to take a break. Afterwards, he jogged at a much slower pace. He got tired again, so he stopped. Then he borrowed a bike and rode home. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is take a look at this graph and figure out which parts are which, right? So it says, Jimmy left his house at 4 o'clock and went for a jog. So if we've got time and distance from home, clearly this is where he started, all right? So right here is where he left his house, and this represents 4 o'clock, all right? Now, he went for a jog. After a while, he got tired and stopped to take a break. Notice, in this interval right here, it's flat at 150 meters, so we know that's when he took his break. Afterwards, he jogged at a much slower pace. So notice, again, after that, he starts making progress again, and notice it's much flatter than it was before, so that's him jogging at a slower pace. Then he stopped again, so that's this. And then he bought a bike and rode home, and notice, now he's going back towards home because his distance from home is decreasing, and that's when he got home right there. Okay, so now we can start answering some questions based on that graph. For example, how fast did he start off jogging? Well, this interval here represents his starting off jogging. So if we want to know how fast he's going, what we need to do is find the slope of that line. All right, so here's my interval. I'm going to find my rise and my run of this little interval here. And notice, it goes from 0 to 150, so it went up 150, and it went over from 0 to 10, so the run is 10. So the slope is 150 over 10. And if I divide that, 150 divided by 10, that's 15. So that would be 15 meters per minute. And there's a speed when he started. All right. Now, the next question here is, how long was his first break? Well, let's see. In our graph, right here represents our first break. All right. So this flat line. Now, how long was it? Well, he started it at 10 minutes and ended it at 20 minutes. So that would make that 20 minus 10, 10 minutes long. Pretty easy. All right. Our next question then is, how fast did he jog after the break? Well, here's him jogging after the break. So if we want to know how fast that is, what we need to do is, again, find the slope of this interval. All right, so to do that, I need to find the rise and the run for this little section here. And notice, for the rise, he started at 150, he ended at 250. So if he went from 150 to 250, that means he went 100 meters. And for the run, we know he started at 20 minutes and ended at 40 minutes. So from 20 to 40, that would be 20 minutes for the run. So if I want my slope, I do rise over run, 100 over 20, and 100 divided by 20 is 5. So this is 5 meters per minute. All right. Next question. How far from home was he when he took his second break? All right. Well, here's the second break right here. How far he was will be on the y-axis over here. So I'll just look over. Look, he's 250 meters from home. It's a pretty easy one, 250 meters from home, because look, right there. All right, next question. What time did he get home? Now, this is tricky, because we can tell he rode all the way back home, and he got home right here at 65. But what time is 65? Now, remember, this is the time that has gone by. He started his whole journey at 4 o'clock. So 65 minutes later is when he got home. 
Now I know 60 minutes is an hour, so this is an hour and five minutes later. So if he started at four o'clock and he added an additional one hour and five minutes, that means he got home at 5.05. All right, that takes us to the last question. How fast was he going on the bike? All right, so this is when he was biking home. So we want to know how fast he was going there. So again, when we want the speed, what we want on our graph here is the slope. So we need to find the rise and the run. And notice the slope's going to be negative in this case. Now, that doesn't mean he's going negative speed. What it means is his distance from home is decreasing per minute. And we'll address that in a second. But let's figure out what this slope is. So he started at 250 and went all the way to zero. So he would decrease 250 meters. And all that happened in a span from 55 to 65. So that happened in 10 minutes. So that slope is negative 250 over 10, which is negative 25. Now remember, you can't go negative meters per minute. What that represents is his distance from home is decreasing 25 meters per minute. So how fast is he actually riding? Well, if he's decreasing his distance from home 25 meters per minute, that means his bike is traveling 25 meters per minute. Okay. So when it's asking about speed, it wants the positive amount because you can't go a negative meter per minute. But what it represents in our graph, because it's negative, is that the distance from home is decreasing. Okay? So the key to all of this is finding slope, finding y-intercept, finding the location of points on the graph. See, it's all about being able to read the graph and also being able to interpret the story to match up with that graph. Okay, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.